Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be answering the question, is it better for the environment to simply keep the car that you already have rather than buying something new? And I think this is a great idea because, you know, why buy something new and more efficient if you already have something that works just fine? Now, I realize that this car here is still pretty new. Uh, it's only five years old, right? So it's still got plenty of life left in it. But this video will apply to whatever the age is of your current car. So for the most part, I agree with the mentality of just keep what I already have because do we really need more and more stuff? We're just creating more and more waste and ruining this place further. But you might be surprised how the numbers work out on what the best thing to do is from an environmental standpoint. So with regards to the environmental impact, we're going to focus on two main parts. First, the emissions involved, and then second, the stuff. Yes, the physical stuff, extraction, mining, manufacturing, disposal, the stuff has to come from somewhere, and then eventually the stuff has to go somewhere. So let's start with emissions. Oh, and surprise, we're not just talking about gas versus electric here. It's very possible that your next car could be gas powered, but get better fuel efficiency. Unless you're buying the new Ford Bronco, then it's probably gonna be worse. So let's say we currently have car A, which gets a certain fuel economy, and we're considering buying a new car, car B that's gas powered, or car C that's electric. The question is, what's the most environmentally friendly option? And what's the worst? Keep A, buy B, or buy C. Let's start with a simple example and say our current car gets 25 miles per gallon. That's the current average for the United States. Let's say car B gets 35 miles per gallon. And let's say the electric option is a Tesla Model 3. Next, we want to know how much emissions are required for each option. Our current car that gets 25 miles per gallon already exists, so the production emissions are zero. Remember, we're trying to see if it's better to buy a new car that doesn't exist yet or keep our current car. To produce a new combustion car, it requires about 9,000 kilograms of CO2 emissions. So we'll use that for car B. Producing a Tesla Model 3 creates about 10,400 kilograms of CO2 emissions. You'll notice more than a gas car. Where do these numbers come from? Well, usually I have to hunt down academic publications to get ballpark figures for these numbers, but Tesla actually provided them in their 2020 environmental impact report, so for the first time I get to use data directly from a manufacturer. The numbers do line up with my previously cited sources, but just to be safe, we'll add in a buffer to make it harder for Tesla later on in the video. So we have the production emissions for our three cars. Now let's add in driving emissions. For gas cars, this is fairly easy to calculate because there's a direct correlation between your fuel economy and how much carbon you produce. For every gallon of gasoline burned, there's a certain amount of carbon in that gallon of gasoline, and that results in a certain amount of CO2 produced. When you add in the emissions required for extraction, refinement, and shipping of that fuel, it works out to about 400 grams or 0.4 kilograms of CO2 emissions per mile for a car getting 25 miles per gallon. For a car getting 35 miles per gallon, that number is significantly lower, just 286 grams or 0.286 kilograms per mile. For a Tesla Model 3 that's charged using the average electrical mix in the United States and taking into consideration charging losses, that number is 125 grams or 0.125 kilograms of CO2 emissions per mile. So now we can start posing our hypothetical question, is it better to keep our old car or buy a new car? Let's say we drive 12,000 miles a year, which is actually less than the US average. After one year, if we add up our production emissions and driving emissions, keeping our current car is the best option, because the production emissions from the new cars make up the bulk of their overall emissions. After two years, keeping your old car is still the best option. After three years, our 25 MPG vehicle is now getting super close in total emissions to the Tesla Model 3, but still beating the 35 MPG vehicle. After four years, our current car, which is getting 25 miles per gallon, is already worse than had we bought a new electric car. That's pretty wild, because it really puts to bed this myth that keeping your old car is better for the environment. After seven years, even the 35 mile per gallon vehicle turns out to be better on overall emissions versus that 25 mile per gallon car. So it's not like the only option is going electric, though from an emission standpoint, electric is quite obviously superior. Yes, even though 60% of the energy used to charge electric cars comes from fossil fuels in the United States, they're still dramatically better than the average gas car. 
So just to play devil's advocate, let's say Tesla's production numbers were way off, or you had to replace the battery pack or something like that. Heck, let's say you had to replace the entire car, so let's double our production emissions. The Tesla is still a cleaner vehicle in less than seven years. It's worth mentioning most electric car battery warranties are eight years, so it's incredibly unlikely this scenario would ever occur. And even if it did, the electric car is greener. What? Now, a lot of people are still very skeptical of the longevity of these cars, but here's a chart from Tesla's 2020 impact report which shows the battery's capacity after 200,000 miles. According to Tesla, capacity retention of Tesla vehicle batteries averages 90% after 200,000 miles of usage. That's incredible, so it's very unlikely you'll be replacing the battery pack during your ownership. Okay, so obviously everyone isn't switching from a 25 mile per gallon car to a 35 mile per gallon car. That's far too specific. So what about your current situation? Well, I made this really cool chart so that anyone could figure out whether they should keep their car or buy new. So what are we looking at? Well, our x-axis is the fuel economy of whatever car we're currently driving. Let's say our current vehicle gets 15 miles per gallon. The y-axis is the fuel economy of whatever car we're looking into buying. Let's say the new car gets 30 miles per gallon. Now let's find the intersection of these two points. If it falls above the trend line, like we see here, then it's better from an emission standpoint to buy new. Let's do a different example. Say we currently get 30 miles per gallon in our car and we're looking at buying a car that gets 40 miles per gallon. Well, this falls below the trend line, so actually it's better to keep our current car than to buy new. Now, all of this is assuming our payoff will occur in five years or 60,000 miles. A 40 mile per gallon car could eventually have better emissions than your current car, but it would actually take nine years for that to break even. Maybe your current car has nine years left in it, maybe it doesn't, but to me, it makes sense to try and find a shorter payoff period. So I chose five years for the purposes of this video. As an example, here's what the chart looks like with the 10 year break even period. As you can see, in this scenario, switching from a 30 MPG to a 40 MPG car makes sense to do. For folks that prefer metric, here's the chart for 100,000 kilometers of driving, or about five years, and here's the second chart for 200,000 kilometers of driving, or about 10 years. Pause the video if you'd like to look at these further. Okay, here's a life hack. If instead of buying a new car, you buy a used car, a car that already exists, well, now any improvement in MPG, say you go from 15 to 16 MPG, well, any improvement means you're going to have an immediate emissions benefit because you don't have to factor in production for either of those vehicles. Now, you might say, well, isn't your old car still being used by someone out there so it doesn't really make any difference? And yeah, maybe it is still being used by someone, but also maybe it was an improvement for that someone. We don't know. So this is why I think it makes the most sense to analyze this at the individual level because we don't know what's going on everywhere, right? So look at one person, see for their scenario, does it improve? And if it improves for each person's scenario, we all improve. All right, now I wanted to make a similar chart for electric cars. Again, the x-axis is the fuel economy of our current vehicle, and our y-axis is the number of years it would take for the electric car to be the greener option, meaning less overall emissions. In this case, using the emissions data for a Tesla Model 3. So, for example, if our current car gets 15 miles per gallon and we switch to electric, in less than two years, we're already doing better from an emission standpoint, including the production emissions required for the Tesla. Of course, that gets more difficult if your current car gets really good gas mileage. If you get 40 miles per gallon currently, it'll take seven years for the environmental payoff in switching to electric. And above 40 miles per gallon, it's probably best to just run your car into the ground and then buy something new. But if your current car gets below 40 miles per gallon, and that's the vast, vast majority of gasoline vehicles, it's actually very likely that the best thing you could do from an emission standpoint isn't hold on to your old car, but instead trade it in for a new electric car. Now, this brings us to part two, the stuff. Jason, what about all the stuff that you need to make an electric car? Now, the concern with electric cars often surrounds the metals used in the motors and batteries. Metals like lithium, cobalt, nickel, and manganese. Lithium itself is pretty abundant, so it's not really an immediate concern. Cobalt, however, is rare and sometimes involves human rights violations when it's mined, as most of it comes from the Democratic Republic of Congo. 
So pretty much everyone working within the electric car space is working to reduce the amount of cobalt needed in their lithium ion battery chemistries. For example, GM reduced its cobalt by 70% in their modern batteries by using more aluminum, and Tesla's environmental impact states they're working to eliminate cobalt from their cathodes long term. So while materials are a problem, there's three things I think that are often overlooked when using, yeah, but the stuff as a counter argument against electric cars. First of all, a single car doesn't use much of this stuff. According to the Argonne National Laboratory, as cited by Nature.com, a single electric car's battery uses just eight kilograms of lithium, 35 kilograms of nickel, 20 kilograms of manganese, and 14 kilograms of cobalt. And these are 1,800 kilogram vehicles we're talking about. So this is a small overall percentage of the stuff required. I bet these numbers are way less than most people think they are. Second, these materials don't go anywhere. Once the car is built, there it is. There's some materials. Here they are, they're going nowhere. So once this car is toast and no longer able to function, well, you can reuse these materials and make another electric car. The amount of materials you can actually reuse is quite impressive. CNBC did a really cool video I'd recommend checking out all about battery recycling and the current players in the field. I'll include a link to this in the video description. So point two being, yeah, an electric car requires more stuff to make, but you can reuse that stuff again and again and again. Third, <clears throat> you know what else takes stuff? Gasoline cars, and not just to make them, but to fuel them. And this is a one-time use thing. We take the fuel out of the ground, we use it, and then it's gone. And the actual amount of fuel that these things use is pretty mind-blowing. Take the average 25 MPG car, for example. Over 200,000 miles, or the life of the car, that's 8,000 gallons of gasoline, or 50,000 pounds of fuel. That's the equivalent weight of about 22 of these MX-5s. Say your car gets around 15 miles per gallon, like the new Ford Bronco. That's 84,000 pounds of fuel, or about 36 MX-5s in weight over its lifetime. And even if your car gets really good fuel economy, like 50 miles per gallon, it's still using 25,000 pounds worth of fuel over 200,000 miles. That's a lot of stuff. Certainly, there is some environmental consequence involved with extracting and refining 50,000 pounds of stuff for the average car. An electric car's battery might weigh 2% of that, and it can be reused again and again and again. Now, it also takes stuff to power the power plants that charge the electric car. However, because electric cars are so much more efficient, and because the entire grid isn't fossil fuel based, well, it's far, far less stuff overall. And as the grid gets cleaner, the gap between EVs and gas burners gets bigger and bigger. So in summary, cars are bad for the environment. Amazing. But often keeping your old car is actually worse for the environment than buying something new that's far more efficient. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Thanks for watching.